<laughs> Thank you very much, first of all. Thank you very much, Jordi, for, yeah. for, for having accepted this uh, strange interview. We are driving. We're yeah. driving because um, we are going to the Laram School. Today is the first day of Laram School 2018. And uh, you are, um, you've been awarded the first ever Laram Lecture. Yeah. So we are on our way to the University of Salerno where you will be delivering the Laram Lecture. Can you tell us something? Okay, we have. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce for the audience uh, you, Jordi Corominas, full professor at UPC, uh, Polytechnical University of Barcelona in Catalonia. And um, tell us something about uh, uh, what will you be talking about today with the students? What will you be delivering as a lecture today? Well, first of all, I would like just to thank Laram for. Uh, Selecting me as the first honor lecture is really an honor for me to do this. Um, my talk will be around, uh, will be on rock falls. Um, rock falls, but a particular type of rock falls, which are fragmental rock falls. Um, for many years, we have been working on risk, risk analysis, and risk assessment, and we realized that uh, all the analyses that are made with rock folds, they consider rock folds as uh, intact rock masses, that they do not break during, during the fall, which is not really the case. Most of rock folds, they break after the first impacts on, on the ground. And this uh, makes uh, a difference because instead of having a single mass, a big mass, we have uh, many pieces, many small pieces. And this makes a difference in when you analyze the risk because these smaller masses, they travel shorter compared to a big mass. But on the other hand, because you have many small blocks, the probability of feedback increases. So this affects all the components of risk. And this is why we were interested in, in that point. So with the support of two PhD students of mine, one PhD student worked on, uh, on how are the fragments produced uh, by brackets, which is there is any law relating the original mass to the number of blocks that have been generated. And another PhD student worked with a, a rockfall code in which integrated the fragmentation of the rockfall. And then uh, this affects the trajectories, the runout, and the kinetic energies. And we realized that all these facts have a strong effect on risk because risk changes. So if, we don't, if you don't consider uh, fragmentation, you come out with uh, rich values. If you consider fragmentation, uh, you have a different results. So this, we, we think that this is really important and this has to be taken into account in the risk analysis. I totally agree with you. Of course, I mean, you've been working on risk analysis for a long time, so at some point from your recent papers, of course, uh, this is something that you've been tackling recently, uh, recently and you published in literature. Uh, we could already understand, uh, that the community could already understand how important is this in uh, run for risk analysis. So let me ask you, because the Laram lecture was awarded to you a few months ago and uh, it was uh, the topic was chosen by you, you've been working on a lot of topics uh, in the by your career, very long career, successful, successful career. How, why did you choose this? Because it's a, it's the a recent uh, research that you are really. Why did you choose this topic over others? Just curiosity. Well, uh, all my research has been driven by question marks. So, I first, I first started involved in uh, landslides because in 1982 we had uh, heavy rains in the Pyrenees and these heavy rains triggered thousands of landslides. 
then this was to me was like a, a, a miracle, meaning that uh, I thought the Pyrenees were quite uh, stable. And then, because this event, we realized that the landslides were clearly an important uh, factor, an important phenomenon in the in the Pyrenees. And then, because of this, we started first knowing what kind of landslides occur, what types, what were the condition and factors, and this. Um, make us to start working uh, on, let's say, uh, susceptibility analysis to see which are the the, the condition and factors that produces the line slash to occur in this place and not in other places. Um, after this, uh, some administrations, uh, regional administrations, the uh, Catalonian government and the Roman government ask us to prepare what at that time we call risk maps. In fact, they were not risk maps, they were simply susceptibility maps. But at that time, by ignorance, we called them uh, risk maps. And then preparing these maps, there were other challenges. For instance, the, the runout. We knew where, where the places where the landslides, shallow landslides, rock falls, debris flows started, but we had no tools to know where they go. So we start working on the runout analysis. And also the other important issue was the the temporal occurrence, the frequency. We didn't know when these uh, landslides occurred. We knew the case of 1982, but nothing else. So we start also dating landslides in order to know which were the recurrence and so on. So this, for a while, we were working on frequency analysis, working on runout analysis, and then, well, uh, as we were asked to do more work for the administration, we were just changing the topics, moved by our uh, ignorance and uh, for our question mark. And uh, then we realized that we need to go to the quantitative risk analysis. And also it required to be more precise in the special distribution, in the temporal distribution and everything. And we work as well with uh, some administrations in northern Spain, in the Basque country, uh, for roads, in which the, we, work, we work with uh, rock falls and debris flows and large landslides. But for rock falls, we realized that uh, making the assumption that uh, we started with a, a mass that did not break, they produced unrealistic results. And we didn't know exactly whether we were in the safe side or exactly. were unsafe side. So this is why we were... My question for you on this matter, sorry if I interrupt yeah. you, is uh, uh, now that you are uh, you know, putting this work on fragmentation and on the way these uh, facts propagation and uh, also, uh, as you said, the magnitude of uh, the rocks that are possibly reaching elements at risk, change elements at risk um, how is it uh, is it uh, sometimes on safe side sometimes on the unsafe side if we do the assumption is always on one side what's okay what can no, it's what you say is 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 contrasting effect if you have uh, a sufficiently long and gentle slope this you are uh, fragmentation leave you to the safe side because unfragmented rock masses go further. Uh, if you are working on a steep slopes, fragment tension put you in the unsafe side. So it depends on where uh, in the situation where you are. If you do not consider fragmentation, sometimes you are in the safe side, sometimes you are in the unsafe side. And this is, well, uh, challenging because uh, you need to know where you are and uh, what we found is uh, if we are working in a steep slopes fragmentation put you in the unsafe side so if you work in a steep slope in cliffs with uh, no no uh, at the foot of the slope without a gentle slope to dissipate the energy then you are in, in the un unsafe side and this is something that should people should be aware of that Moving away from uh, you know, your research and uh, 
dealing briefly, talking briefly about Laram, Laram School, uh, as uh, uh, people may know or may not know, you are one of the professors that were with uh, Laram very early at, uh, when, when, when it started. It all started in 2005, 2006, and you were there in the scientific committee, the, uh, scientific committee. You've been teaching at Laram many times. You know, you can be considered one of the founding fathers of Laram. What do you think about this experience? Can you tell us something, uh, uh, in your opinion? Uh, uh, how was it in this, these years, and uh, where can it go, in your opinion, about the school? Well, Laren, Laren was an experiment. Nobody knew exactly what may happen with the school, but I think it was an excellent initiative because uh, it gives the opportunity to the students to be in touch and to talk, to discuss, with uh, uh, landslide -like experts uh, everywhere in the world. So uh, as the experts have different expertise, all the students may find a point of interest with uh, the teachers. And this is really excellent because they, they can have doubts, they can, they can discuss the, their own interest with the, with the teachers. And on the other side, there is, there is opportunity to interact with other PhD students that they have uh, the same interest or different interests, they use different approaches, they give you ideas of what to do, and also it promotes networking, which is really excellent. I, I see that all the students, we have had students from UBC attending to Laram, and they were always very happy. And they, they consider the experience uh, really a, a fabulous experience and an excellent opportunity to, to have uh, this possibility to interact with other PhD students with the same topics with, or with the similar topics and also with the teachers, which is really excellent. There is no other possibility to do this, I would say, in the world. Yeah. I, I'm glad that you, among the things that you said, of course, uh, positive things for Laren, thank you very much, because the things that you mentioned uh, at the end, the networking, is something that I can also uh, say happens uh, uh, year after year. The group of students then uh, tend to, some of them, of course, tend to meet later on, also by chance sometimes, or because they, they look for each other up afterwards, and really I confirm that it's really a good, and you know, one of the good outcomes of this experience. Thank you. And uh, just to close this brief conversation that we are having, because we are almost there at the university. Uh, moving to the research in general, landslide risk research that has been done in the past few years, the past decades, and maybe the research that still has not been done and must be done. Uh, your opinion about uh, major breakthroughs or major uh, research activities or topics that have really pushed us forward as a society because uh, in, in the past few years and maybe something that really is not there yet and we must uh, look uh, forward for the future to find answers. Besides what you said about rock fall and rock fragmentation, other things that you may think well, of? Uh, I'm, I'm really biased in my own research. So of course, that, uh, okay. <laughs> your expertise. So I would say drives. that uh, multi-risk analysis is uh, still a challenge because you need to to combine and to merge different uh, time scales, different mechanisms. That all they uh, all they are acting in the same place. So to to combine everything in the in the same space. For instance, here you are close to Vesuvius. You have uh, volcanic activity. You have uh, these uh, flash floods. You have uh, these debris flow or, or flow slides. You have rock falls uh, affecting the same area. All of them affecting the same area. Not to mention earthquakes that are also oh, exactly. So that's then if you try to carry out uh, multi risk. This is a challenge that you are, you are working at different time scales with the different processes, and this is not easy to cope. So it's uh, to me this theoretically people say well we are interested in this, but in in practice we are not doing this because it's really difficult and to prepare, let's say, a multi-hazard map is, is still a challenge. So, so to me, is 
um, this is something I would like to do if I had time in the future, but I, I won't. I you won't, won't because I... <laughs> <laughs> so what plans do you have for the future then? You know? Well, just uh, traveling and having fun. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good way to close this brief conversation. Thank you very much Jordi, for, for this. And also we are looking, I'm looking forward, all the students are looking forward to hear your lecture today at Laram. And uh, thank you very much for this. Thank you to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.